Hi, this is Tim from Tiger Astronomy. I'm going to talk a little bit about our new communications library for ASCOM drivers, which is called Reactive ASCOM. And I'll show you some code and how easy it is to get set up and get started. And I'll talk about a little bit about the background and how it all works. OK, the best way to understand this is to write some code. So let's do that now. The first thing we need to do is bring in the uh, NuGet package for Reactive ASCOM. So right click on your references in your project, go to Manage NuGet Packages. Now uh, we need to search online and just to, just to note here I'm including in this drop down here I'm including pre-release because the package is at this point in time pre-release. Um, eventually we'll make a proper full release and do remember to set that setting back to stable only otherwise you could get into some problems with uh, slightly dodgy packages so in the search box you can just search for ASCOM <coughs> and there we are reactive ASCOM is the one you need so install that and over in the references over here or when I accept the license agreement for RX over in the references panel over here you should see the dependencies coming in This does take a little while on my system, so I will pause the video and come back when it's done. OK, almost done, and there we are. Green tick and close. OK, let's write code. The first thing we need is to create an endpoint. Now, an endpoint describes the device that we're going to be connected to. Currently, we support serial endpoints, we will eventually support Ethernet endpoints, but for now uh, we just create a serial endpoint. <coughs> we do that by calling a static factory method. I can't spell device endpoint dot from connection string and then we can pass in a connection string. Now this is something, it's just a string, it's something you can really easily store in your settings file or your ASCOM drivers profile or wherever you like but I'm just kind of hard coding it for now because that's just simple for the purposes of this demo. Okay now having got an endpoint now we need a channel and that's something that implements iCommunications channel and as I said we currently support serial communications channel only um, more planned on that and <coughs> endpoint passing the endpoint now just a quick word here if you do do uh, unit testing or test driven development you can pass in here uh, an i serial port object which can be a mock so you can uh, get in there and um, um, mock out the serial port and do unit testing but we'll just default that parameter we don't need it um, okay so we have our channel the next thing we need is a tra something called a transaction observer and what this does is it takes the command strings the commands that you're going to send out to the device and it uh, basically makes sure everything happens in sequence and, and guarantees your sequencing and thread safety so it's a really important class. And it takes the channel because it has to know where to send commands to. And finally, we need. Uh, we can't. We have no way to give transactions to a transaction observer. A transaction observer, as its name implies, needs to observe a, an I observable. And the way we get that I observable is we create a transaction processor. And we have provided uh, something called reactive transaction processor. And that, I don't think, takes any parameters from memory. No, that's correct. And then we need to create the subscription. 
between the transaction processor and the transaction observer and we do that by calling processor dot subscribe transaction observer and we pass in the transaction observer okay and that is the setup done last thing we need to do is just open the channel channel dot open cool that's the setup finished now the next step is to create a transaction that we want to send to the device and get a response back. Now I'm just going to use a very simple um, string terminated transaction and I'm going to use it to query the write ascension property of the device. So uh, we we'll call it RA transaction equals. Now we, we supply a couple of um, useful. Um, let's call them example transactions um, which are kind of pre-rigged to work with mead type protocols um, the idea here is that you as a driver developer would derive your own transaction classes based on the type of response you want to receive and um, the transaction has to be smart enough to parse the incoming data stream and pick out the data it needs so um, for a, when querying the right ascension property you might dream up uh, a sex, sexagesimal transaction which which is able to understand uh, the, the right ascension format and would actually give you back a double for example we I'll, I'll perhaps cover that in another video but um, for now I'm just going to use one of the um, example transactions that we provide and that would be the terminated string transaction lovely and the command we need to send in mead speak colon get right ascension hash and I could leave it like that we'll be done at this point but just to illustrate the fact that I can at this point supply the terminator in case in case you've got a scope that uses different terminators you can just supply those oops and you'll see that they've actually they're actually slightly grayed out or dimmed uh, and that's because the compiler is telling me their optional parameters and the values I've specified are the defaults so I actually didn't need to specify them okay so having got our transaction um, we execute that transaction by committing it with the transaction processor so we call processor dot commit transaction RA transaction and then in fact that that transaction will run uh, on its own and the result will come back um, at some time in the future now we could sit here in a loop waiting for the for the result to come back but actually there's a much better way to do that and that is on the transaction itself there is a uh, method called wait for completion or timeout and uh, oh one thing I forgot to do here was to tell it what its timeout was so we can actually initialize the timeout here uh, using a time span structure time span from seconds and I usually use about two seconds there that's plenty okay so uh, okay so we've waited for the result when the result comes back uh, that call will actually block until the result is available so um, we then need to check whether the transaction succeeded so there's a field on the transaction called failed okay and I and I want to if the transaction succeeded I want to print out the result so if, if the transaction did not fail and uh, this is a little neat resharper trick here just activate that not template and it kind of re 
reverses and puts the not in front for me. Um, so if not transaction failed, then do something with it. So we're going to just console dot right line. Uh, Uh, console.writeLine takes a format string, the same as string.format. So I'm going to print out ra transaction dot value, and that's just a string value with the terminator stripped off. So lovely. And then um, to clean up afterwards, we need to just dispose of the transaction processor, and that disposes some some underlying subscriptions and tidies everything up and that will actually close the serial port as well because as soon as nobody's listening anymore the port just automatically gets closed um, and finally just so that we can see our results I always forget to do this and then the screen just flickers up and disappears we just need to put a console.read line at the end just so that the screen doesn't go away and that is enough, I think, to actually... I have a drive system connected on COM1. So I'm just going to start this code and let it run and see what happens. OK. Loading. Uh, Visual Studio just does take a little bit of time to load symbols, which you can't see because it's on my other screen. And there we go, right, Ascension. 20 hours 54 minutes 5 seconds and enter to quit now that wasn't very exciting um, it would be nice to add some diagnostics here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another package here so in NuGet I'm just going to set the pre-release setting back to stable only and I want to get nlog dot configuration. Now, nlog is a logging package for .NET. It's very powerful, very flexible, well worth looking into if you haven't done. And uh, we use nlog within Reactive Ascom and it just needs to be configured because by default it doesn't produce any output. Um, and what this NuGet package does is it adds a skeleton configuration file for nlog. Okay, done. Uh, you, you'll also notice it's added this schema for IntelliSense, which is always very useful. And so here we go, nlog.config. So we just open that up. And right, so following basically the example there, in fact I'm gonna edit I'm gonna edit the example they've given us. We need to create a target. So the type uh, IntelliSense. Oh yeah, coloured console. Lovely. I got completion there. Uh, I'm going to call it trace. Uh, there isn't a file name because it's going to the console. And the layout is just a simple layout string. Uh, say nlog's got a lot of detail you can put in here, but we're just keeping it simple. Rules is uh, we want to log everything min level is trace right to is trace and that should be that should just log absolutely everything to the console so good that's enough um, save that uh, just make sure that it's going to be copied you can't see the properties because it's on my other screen but it's set to always copy so right so if I start this program again now we should get some serious diagnostics out on the console and there we go so you can see the uh, <coughs> transaction pipeline connected to channel with endpoint com 19600 no none means uh, no parity, eight data bits, one stop bit, and you can see that it's uh, defaulted all those values. We just gave it COM1. Uh, opens the channel, and then th this serial receive here is, is diagnosing, it's tracing the subscription onto the observable character sequence. 
and then we can see our first transaction which automatically gets ID 1 each transaction gets a unique ID at runtime and there's the command and currently it has no value because it hasn't run yet and its timeout was two seconds so here you can see the command being sent and now we get a load of serial receive events on subscription number one so you can see uh, the 20:56:58 hash coming back and there is our result being printed out and then we get transaction one completed which interestingly comes out after we've got the result and printed it which is fascinating and we also get some tracing to say that the transaction completed there's the command and there's the response that came back and its timeout was two seconds again lovely okay that completes our lightning speed overview and if you'd like to find out more there's a project homepage on our website http uh, tigra-astronomy.com forward slash reactive communications for ASCOM and uh, we have a bit of information there and uh, just here there are, there are some links to uh, uh, the code which is on Bitbucket, there we go, that's the Bitbucket Git repository and there's also a link to a blog post we've written uh, that goes into a bit more detail about um, why we did this and how it works internally and uh, you know lots of good information there so um, we do hope you'll try it out I think it can be a real time saver um, it is very much pre-release at the moment I've had some excellent feedback already um, but you know I really really would value any more feedback that uh, comes my way so have fun with it and do let me know how you get on this is Tim Long from Tiger Astronomy thanks for listening and goodbye